Welcome to Life According to Scripture, where the Word of God is alive, anointed, and geared toward developing, improving, and strengthening your relationship with the Lord. Our teachings aim to spiritually nurture both new believers and strengthen those who are already mature in their faith. We're grateful to have you join us in the study of the Word of God today. We pray that it penetrates your heart deeply, bringing you even closer to the Lord. Greetings, radio audience, in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, this is Minister Caroline Gauthier coming to you live from Oasis of Faith Christian Center in Hesperia, California, in the United States. Thank you for gathering around the Word of God with us today. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, according to Romans 10, 9, and 10, that means to say with your mouth that Jesus is the Christ, Jesus is the Son of God, that He died for your sins, rose from the dead, and that you want to make Him Savior and Lord of your life. And when you do that, beloved, we call that being born again. That means you have a brand new spirit. Now, what that means, what the reason I did that uh, at the very beginning today is because the things that we're going to be talking about will not apply to you unless you have received Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. Hallelujah. So today we're talking about, are you called? Are you called? When we say called, we, we, we know as believers that God call, gives all of us a calling or all of us an assignment. We all have a purpose to fulfill in this life. Amen? So what has God called you to do? When we study scripture, we find throughout the Bible, Bible or scripture, that whenever God wanted to do something in the world, he chose a man or a woman through whom to work. Lots of times um, believers um, think of the uh, stories and the characters in the Bible, in Scripture, as just stories. But they are not just stories. They are there to teach us how to live and how not to live, how to be blessed and how not to be cursed. Amen. So these, the, but, but what, what happened was God chose, he would choose an individual, you know, like you or me, an individual um, to effect his plan through for whatever it was that he wanted done in the earth realm. He would choose a man or a woman. We usually start in scripture looking at, at, at uh, the character of Abram. His name was Abram at the beginning. But later, he was to be renamed Abraham. Abraham was chosen by God to father a son in his later years of life, he and his wife. Why was he chosen? Abraham and Sarah produced, through their lineage, Isaac, who would then, in turn, produce Jacob, who would later be named Israel. Now, already, if, you're, if you know anything about the Middle East, you know that the location of Israel, that that is where the Jewish people, that God calls his own chosen apple of his eye, that's what he refers to, that they live and originate from Israel. Israel began the root of Israel with Jacob, Jacob's name being changed to Israel. All of this, notice, pay attention, God is using a person, an everyday individual, not somebody special. They weren't, any, they weren't special. Well, what made them special was God chose them to, to do something for him. But other than that, beloved, they were everyday people like you and me. So the root of the Jewish people, Israel, came through one man, one woman, Abraham and Sarah. The covenant that Christians today live by, or should be living by, was brought about through Abraham and Sarah 
and we call that the Abrahamic covenant. Why do we call it the Abrahamic covenant? Because when God speaks, it's covenant. When he speaks to his covenant children, he speaks his covenant word, which is scripture, into their life. So the Abrahamic covenant, Galatians 3, 14 teaches us, it is written that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. That's anyone that was not Jewish. That's what, that was, that's what Gentiles meant at that time. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through, look at how it's going to happen. That's why I wanted you to, to repeat uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10 at the beginning. Because this covenant blessing is only going to come to you through the Lord Jesus Christ. Through one man that God sent to this earth that we might receive the Spirit through faith. The promise of the Spirit through faith. Verse 16, to Abraham and his seed. Who's his seed? The believers, the ones that receive him as our father of faith. To Abraham and his seed, that's us, the believers, were promised. Promises were, were made. So the covenant God made through one man, Abraham, was passed down to believers on Jesus Christ. That's you and me. All this was done through one person to effect or place into effect God's covenant in the earth realm. We're seeing, you're seeing, beloved, how God chooses. He doesn't get off his throne and come down here to do it himself. He chooses a man or a woman to put a plan in place that he wants in effect in the earth realm. We look at the life of Samuel and how God used one man to effect his plan in the earth realm. Samuel was a miracle baby. His mother had been barren or unable to have children. Hannah, his mom, prayed and fasted, pleading with God to give her a baby. She promised God she would dedicate him. If he gave her a baby, she would dedicate him and give him back to God. She would take him to the priest and dedicate him to God. She eventually became pregnant with who we know is Samuel. God spoke directly to Samuel as a child. So Samuel had no question of being called by God. He turned out to be one of the great prophets of God in the Old Testament. God used him to designate David, King David, still a teenager, as king of Israel, his chosen people. Are you seeing, beloved, how God chooses one person? We may not think anything special of them. You may not even be thinking of anything special for yourself. But the fact is, God thinks you're special when you receive him as your Savior and Lord. And he will choose whomever he chooses to do whatever it is he wants effected in the earth realm. They're everyday people. Hallelujah. We see in scripture the story of Ruth and Boaz who eventually married and through their lineage came our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're looking at how God uses everyday people when he wants to accomplish something in the earth realm. When we read the story of David, we see in 1 Samuel 17 where the enemy of Israel, Goliath, was defeated by one young man, David, to save his people, Israel. All of the men, the grown-up men, strong soldiers, they were all afraid of, of the giant. But this young man, this young teenager, David, was not afraid. Why wasn't he afraid? Because if you read in scripture, he said to the Philistine, to the giant, you come with me, to me with a sword and a, and a shield. That means physical weapons. He says, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Why was that important? Because David was saying, you come to me with physical weapons, but I come to you in the covenant 
of my God. In other words, the Jewish people had a covenant with God because of Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant. Hallelujah. We look at the biblical character Moses, whose life was supposed to be taken on the orders of the evil king, but his mom wouldn't allow it. And she placed the baby in a basket and placed him in a river to hide him from the murderous king. Moses was discovered by the king's daughter and she rescued the baby. She took him into her home and she raised him as her own son. Moses would later become the leader of Israel, the leader of God's chosen people that I've just referred to earlier in this teaching. Moses would later become the leader of Israel that led God's people out of Egyptian bondage. He was the man that God handed the Ten Commandments to for his people to live by. What a life! What a man. These are all examples of when God wants to accomplish something in the earth realm. He always chooses one person, one person to whom to affect his plan. When he was ready to send Jesus into the earth realm, he chose one young girl, one young girl who was a virgin, the Virgin Mary. Hallelujah. So you see, and then what? watch, he chose her husband for her, Joseph. He had to have chosen him because here was a man who was newly married and his wife becomes, was pregnant and he wouldn't touch her physically. He wouldn't have sexual relations with his own wife because the instruction that the Holy Spirit had given that he wasn't to touch her until after the baby was born. Hallelujah. Are we, are we looking at, now people uh, talk about Mary as if she's an angel or something, and I don't, I'm not being condescending, but Mary was a young girl that did not seem to be much different from any of the other young girls. Now, if she was, then it's not in scripture. But the one thing about her was her heart was towards God. Her heart was to receive what God said. And when the angel came and told her, she says, well, how can this be? How am I going to be able to have a baby? I've never known a man. She's a young girl. She's a virgin. So she's asking, not because she won't go along with it, but because she didn't have an understanding of how this could be. But when the angel explained it to her, when he broke it down for her, what did she say? This is an everyday young girl, an everyday young virgin. And she says in response to the angel, she says, be it unto me according to your word. In other words, I'm in agreement with what God is saying here today. I don't understand how it's going to happen, but I understand that I'm chosen. He told her she was chosen above all other women. Hallelujah. Blessed. Hallelujah. What a life. What a life. These are all examples of when God wants to accomplish something in the earth realm. Pay attention, beloved. He always chooses one person through whom he can affect his plan in the earth realm. He doesn't leave his throne to come down here and do it. He chooses people. There are numerous other examples of this in scripture for us to study and learn from. But the main takeaway for you today, beloved, is God is still choosing people to effect his plan in the earth realm. The problem is we always think of God choosing others to affect his plan and not us. But every one of us is chosen by God to do something to further the work of the kingdom of God in the earth realm. For me, it happens to be ministering his word, teaching his word to his people. Your call may be different. It may be in business where you do well financially and then you help financially support God's kingdom. Some he simply calls to help, just to be a helper, an exhorter, an encourager. Whatever the call, it's up to us to accept it, to receive it, and to walk it out in this life. The one person that fits right into this teaching of God, always choosing a person to get his plan accomplished, is Jesus Christ himself. Had he not been chosen to do that, where would mankind be? Now that we know God chooses, we accept, and the work of the kingdom gets accomplished according to the will of God. 
Hallelujah. What is it that God has called you to do, beloved? That is the question I want to leave you with. Now that's all the time we have for today, beloved. You can reach us in the United States at Oasis of Faith Christian Center, 17520 Lemon Street, Hesperia, California, 92345. In the United States, you can also reach us at lifescripture at gmail.com. Now until we come into your home again next week, I pray the blessing of God over your life and over your family. I thank you that you will take this word deep into your spirit and into your heart, that you will study it and meditate on it. And may God give thee increase.